Hello, I'm Julia Fisher, and you're listening to The Olive Tree, the programme that brings you news and interviews direct from the Holy Land to illustrate that despite the politics and conflict in the region, there are some good news stories emerging. These stories involve both Jewish believers and Arab or Gentile Christians, men and women who understand their Bibles and what it means to believe in Jesus or Yeshua, as he's called in Hebrew. My guests today are Tom and Ronit Bender. Tom is a quiet, retiring man, a former professional basketball player, originally from America. Ronit is Jewish, born and brought up in Israel. She has a bubbly, extrovert character. The story of how they met and married is one of the most unusual stories I've ever heard. When we met recently in northern Israel, Ronit began by telling her story, a story that started tragically. Yes, it was a, a tragic start to my life. I grew up in a broken home, um, went through rape as a child, uh, parents had got divorced, abuse in foster care. Uh, then I came home, my mom got married the third time, abuse, some more abuse there. And so my life really was a life of abuse pretty much until uh, I started using drugs because I didn't have anyone to trust believe that God doesn't exist. Obviously, if he did, he didn't know who I was, and and so I didn't know who to turn to, so the drugs numbed the pain, so I turned to that solution, even though I know it's not a good one. But God is using this same very uh, tragic circumstances that I had to help other women in similar situation. That's the story today, but of course it's taken years to unravel. You've been on a long journey. You were very successful professionally, though, weren't you? Yes, when I, was, when I finished the army, I went to Jerusalem and I worked as a deputy prime minister assistant. And uh, the world was at my feet and I had, I had women working for me and I mixed with all, the round, with all the right people, but I felt that I had a hole in my heart and I didn't know what, what was missing. Something was very missing. And so I decided maybe I should move to another city and find a solution there and I moved to Tel Aviv. And then I worked in a travel agency with pilgrimage tours and was introduced to Christians for the first time. I realized that Jesus was a very, Yeshua was very special to very many people that are coming specially to meet him and or meet, meet the nation where he was born, died and rose again. And, and I didn't understand it at the time because my spiritual eyes were still closed and my heart was closed. But I knew in my head I could see that, they, they, that those Gentiles were really, they loved Yeshua, they loved Jesus, and they came to, to follow his footsteps here. So you weren't a religious person up to that point, so you must have been slightly curious about all these Christians. Yeah, I, was, I didn't come from a, it's all from a, from a religious background, so, so I, I knew, I could see that I had some very poor groups and very rich groups, and some of them, were, they really touched my heart when I saw well, the gate that some took had a blanket and put all the worldly belonging in one blanket so they can come once in their life into the Holy Land to see to see to follow the footsteps of Yeshua. The story of how you met Tom, your husband, is I've never heard anything quite like it before. You uh, you were due to marry somebody else. You were flying to America to get married and then clapped eyes on the man who is now your husband, at the airport. Tom, maybe I should perhaps ask you your reaction to first seeing Ronit. Well, when I first set my eyes on Ronit, I was stunned, you might say. Uh, she's a, such a vivacious, beautiful woman. But I knew that she was going to America to get married. I was playing basketball professionally in Israel back in the 1970s, and I played against uh, her fiancé. So uh, initially I knew that she was going to the U.S. to get married, but when I first set my eyes on her, I couldn't believe such a beautiful woman could be, uh, could be walking around in Israel. Well, that's over 30 years ago. And uh, you didn't realize, Tom, that Renita had quite made up her mind that she wasn't going to marry the person that you thought she was going to marry. She was going to marry you. And uh, Renita, you came back to Israel with that in your mind, didn't you? Absolutely. I had this... Uh agreement with my unholy trinity, me, myself, and I, that if Tom is going to be at the airport waiting for me, that's definitely, I got it right, because I felt in my heart that that's going to be my husband. I, long before Tom knew about it or anyone else, I called those things as though they are, even though they're not at the time, but I just had this knowing, and I believe God is the one that put that knowing in my heart. 
Tom, when did you first realise that actually Ronit was to be your wife? Five o'clock one Saturday morning, I, I went to the airport to pick up Ronit. We sat in our little Peugeot car and Ronit broke down and said, I want to receive Yeshua. I've had an experience with a, a tour group and I now realize that Jesus is Lord and, and my Savior. And uh, there at five o'clock in the morning at Ben Gurion Airport, uh, I led Ronit to the Lord. And five minutes after that, I proposed. I asked her to be my wife. Uh, I didn't tell her that in the beginning of our relationship because I did not want um, her to say, I want to marry you. Uh, I will save Yeshua. I wanted her to have that conviction in her heart that Yeshua is her Messiah, and her Lord and her Savior. So that Saturday morning at 5 o'clock, when she received Yeshua, I dropped the question, would you marry me? Now, of course, Ronit, for a Jewish person to accept Yeshua is a, is a big step. How big a step was it for you? It was a very big step. And my, my father was very against it. My mom was against it. But both of them got saved individually before they, before they passed on. My sister gave her heart to the Lord, but as a result of lots of pressures here, she changed her mind. And the rest of, I have very little family left because most of my family got killed in the Holocaust. But I have a cousin here who wants nothing to do with me. So for a Jewish person to receive Yeshua as Lord, is, is, it's called persecution. And, and in some places, some people do a funeral for the person that believes because they say they're no longer, they're not going to live. And yet Yeshua is Jewish. He was Jewish. He's Lord. And it's just that the eyes of the Jewish people are closed. And the veil will be removed when the heart turns toward the Lord. Now, Ronit, you married a professional basketball player and uh, your lives took you to Australia. For a long time you lived there, Tom, but then you felt very strongly that it was time to move back to Israel. Yeah, after we, we, uh, we got married here in Israel, I knew that we could not stay in Israel. Spiritually, Israel was very dry. And I knew that in order for both of us to grow in the Lord, we would need to leave. So um, I'm a naturalized Australian citizen. I became an Australian back in the 1970s. Originally, I grew up in America. So we decided to go to Australia, where we grew both spiritually in the Lord. And um, about five, six years ago, the Lord impressed on my heart very clearly that now was a time uh, to return to Israel. So we took the needed steps in order to uh, return to Israel. And four and a half years ago, we, we made that decision to come. Ronit, was that a hard decision for you? Were you not settled in Australia? I was settled in Australia, but and I, I made a decision a long time ago that I'm going to be settled wherever I am because there's no point having your heart in one place and your body in another. But having a son in Australia was very, very difficult. Our only child to leave him behind. But whenever you do something worthwhile, it costs you, and that was the price that we paid. And why did God bring you back here? What is going on in your lives that, that you now understand was the reason for it? It is actually quite humorous because God took a Jewish girl and a Gentile boy. He brought us here to the northern part of Israel, and we're ministering to the Arabs. We see Arabic people coming to the Lord. It's hidden in this society here where we are living. If an, one of those people openly receives Yeshua, they can be killed for honor killing. And so everything is under the radar and, and done in secret. But there will come a day when the Lord will bless it openly. He does. He really rewards us. He gives us a lot of grace, a lot of favor. Tom is involved in basketball. And we're just doing exactly what he wants us to do. And at the same time, we also go out to the nation. We share our testimonies and just talk about Israel. And wherever we go, people say we didn't know, we didn't know, because a lot of people don't know. They're fed on media, on television. And this is a program that tells the truth and the facts from Israel. But many other programs are not. How come you have such a heart for the Arab people when you're Jewish? Well, I didn't. I didn't even realize I didn't when I first came here. And the Lord did surgery on my heart the whole night. He and I were struggling just like Jacob with the angel. And at the end, I said at five o'clock in the morning, I said, OK, Lord, you win your way. I'll do it your way. And the Lord has given me a great love for the Arabic people. Two of my closest friends here, girlfriends, are Arabic, Arabs. And God is using us in an amazing way. It's all he's doing. We are just available and we follow his footsteps and follow his leading. 
And we see people here saved, we see people healed, we see people restored, and we see we bring peace and joy in the midst of a lot of chaos. And it's just wonderful to see what the Lord is doing here. Tom, when you look ahead to the next three, five years, what do you believe God is going to be doing here? We believe that Yeshua will return. <laughs> Are you serious about that? Yes, we, we, we see the culmination of the end of the end times. We, we see the, the nations uh, that surround Israel. Uh, we see the, the, the things that they are planning. Um, we, we look at uh, uh, the, the ancient um, prophets and we see what has been foretold. And I believe we are close to the return of the Messiah. Are you unusual in holding that view or is that a commonly held view here amongst the believers? I don't know. I just sense in my heart we're very close to the return of Yeshua. And you, you're neat? Mm-hmm. I have the same view, yeah. All the writings are on the wall and we just keep doing what God called us to do and in his good time he'll come and take us home. Tom and Renit Bender sharing their unique story. And you're listening to The Olive Tree with me, Julia Fisher the program that investigates what God is doing in the Holy Land today amongst both Jewish believers and Arab or Gentile Christians. Stories like Tom and Renit's may surprise you. To meet them is to meet a couple who are living out their lives in Israel with a passion to share their faith with as many people as they can. The Olive Tree Reconciliation Fund is a small charity based in the UK that seeks to understand and support believers living in Israel and the Palestinian areas. Tom and Ronit are reaching out to many people, both Jews and Arabs, who find themselves in difficulty. Perhaps you would like to take an interest in our work and come alongside in support. If you'd like to receive our bi-monthly newsletter or join our next tour to Israel and meet some of the people you hear on this programme, then do get in touch. You'll find some information and articles on our website, www.olivetreefund.org, where you can also leave a donation. Or you can write to me, Julia Fisher, at the Olive Tree Reconciliation Fund, P.O. Box 850, that's Horsham, RH12, 9GA in the UK. Thank you for listening today. Join me at the same time next week with more news and interviews from the Holy Land. Until then, goodbye.